In the past year, I've been able to grow my Instagram account from a thousand followers to over 8,000 followers using only my authentic and organic growth strategies. In this video, I'm going to share five methods that you need to implement if you want to see the same results. If you're new here, my name is Katie and here on YouTube, I love to share all of my best tips and advice about social media marketing and creative entrepreneurship. In order to see true organic growth on Instagram, the first thing that you need to have is a niche. I know you hear this over and over again, but it is so true. If you do not have a niche, a purpose, a reason for your Instagram profile, no one is going to have a reason to follow you. I see this all the time. People with a personal account that want to grow on Instagram. First, you need to answer why. Why do you want to grow on Instagram? There needs to be a reason. Once you have your why, then you're able to establish the kind of content that you want to create and the audience you want to serve. And that is a niche. Whether you want to advertise your existing business, develop a digital business or become an influencer, all of these are valid reasons for growing on Instagram. And if your reason is being an influencer, that's great, but you need to have a certain audience you want to reach and a certain message you want to share. There needs to be a reason. Otherwise I'm going to show up at your profile and say, why would I bother following this person? What am I going to get out of it? And therein lies the true secret of Instagram, which is this, your profile is not for you. It is for your ideal audience. And until you start thinking about how you can serve your audience rather than what you want to share, you're not going to start growing. It's the harsh truth, but you needed to hear it. So before any of these other methods are actually going to help you grow, you need to have a niche, an ideal audience and good, valuable content that you can share with them. Speaking of valuable content, the second necessity is having high value content that you are serving to your followers. I'm afraid that in a lot of other videos that people make about Instagram, this is kind of understated because a lot of educators want to say anybody can do it. Anybody can grow on Instagram. Just use these few hacks and you'll be famous too. But the fact of the matter is people who grow on Instagram grow because they have good content that serves value to people. And again, not to be harsh, but part of this process is taking an outside look at your profile and asking yourself, if I didn't know who I was, could I find value in this content? And you have to be honest with yourself here. Maybe the answer is no. If all the identifying information from your profile was stripped away and it was photos of somebody else and somebody else's kids and somebody else's breakfast, would you be interested in following that? I'm going to guess probably no. So you need, 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 need to make sure that the content you're creating is actually going to be interesting and valuable to this potential audience that you're trying to reach. When I'm thinking about creating content for my audience, there are three main categories that I like to serve in and they are encouragement, education, and entertainment. No matter your niche or industry, you can create content that is in one of these three formats. And these are three different ways that you can serve your audience. So go through your posts, read your captions, look at your images and ask yourself, is this encouraging my ideal audience? Is this entertaining my ideal audience? Is it educating them? If it doesn't really fall into one of those three, then it might not be a very valuable post. So if you want to grow on Instagram, you need to make sure that you're creating high value content that serves your audience. Otherwise, none of these growth hacks or methods are ever going to work for you. The third method that you can use for organic growth in 2020 is shareable content. Ever since I started talking about this a few months ago, I have seen it in so many places. All of the big creators in my industry that I follow have started implementing it in one way or another, which I find very interesting and honestly telling that it is effective in the current algorithm situation. So let me explain what shareable content is. Basically, this is any kind of post that you would put on your Instagram feed that is worthy of pressing that little airplane button and sharing it to your Instagram story or sending it to a friend. Often this kind of content also falls into the savable category, which is again, hitting that little bookmark button and saving it for later, kind of like in a Pinterest board, but it's all within Instagram. The same kind of content usually works for both sharing and saving. So for the sake of this video, all of that is going to be within this tip. I really do believe that right now the algorithm is prioritizing shares and saves a little bit 
more than likes. So I think that it makes sense to target your content specifically for those kinds of interactions. Plus, in addition to it being helpful in the mysterious algorithm, we know for sure that sharing posts to your story or to your friends is just basic 101 organic Instagram growth. Think about it this way. If I post a graphic or a quote to my Instagram feed and one of my followers presses that share button and puts it on their Instagram story, then one of their followers might see that graphic and think, hey, that's pretty cute or interesting or encouraging. I wanna check out the creator. So they'll tap on the post, they'll come to my profile, and that is another profile visit that I have the chance to convert into a follower. So it just makes sense that making posts that are optimized for being shared to an Instagram story or to a friend is a really great method for not only kind of hacking the algorithm, but also for getting just natural, organic, common sense growth. So how do you create shareable content? To me, there are a few important factors that go into making a successfully shareable piece of content on Instagram. The first component is it's usually a graphic. People seem to really be into digital illustration, infographics, text art, quotes, all that sort of thing on Instagram these days stands out a little bit from the typical photos that we're used to seeing. And because it's not a photo of a specific person, it's a lot easier for us to see ourselves in it and to share it to our story and kind of repurpose it as a part of our own content. Photos of me are not gonna be that shareable because there's not really a real reason for anybody to just share a picture of this random girl to their Instagram story. But a graphic like this, talking about tips for going on Instagram Live, is the kind of thing that you might share to your story if you are also a social media marketing professional or interested in content creation. Or a post like this that looks like a screen cap of a tweet that is an encouraging quote is the kind of thing that you might also share to your story because you wanna tell your followers the same message. So in addition to your shareable content being a graphic, it's also really important that this content communicates some kind of message or identity or feeling all within this one image. It's awesome to share album posts to your Instagram feed so people can swipe through and spend longer engaging with your post, but when they share it to their story, their followers are only gonna be able to see that cover image or whichever one they choose to share. So whatever image you're creating to be optimized for sharing, you need to make sure that all of the information and all the context of that post can be found within this one image. Otherwise, it's not gonna be that shareable because out of context, it doesn't make sense. So you wanna make sure that everything you're trying to communicate in this graphic is in the one slide, the one image, and that is gonna allow it to be valuable when it's shared to a story. The third component of shareable content is using your brand colors or whatever aesthetics you are using consistently on your Instagram feed in that content as well. The goal of this is that as your followers continue to share your stuff, hopefully multiple times to their stories, it becomes recognizable to their followers as well. And in general, you're just getting some good brand recognition and people will start to remember you for the colors and fonts and styles that you're using. And not only is this shareable content going to help you grow organically by it being shared to the followers of your followers, but it's also gonna be useful in the algorithm when Instagram sees that a post is getting a lot of shares, they're more likely to put it in the feed of more of your followers. The fourth method for organic growth on Instagram in 2020 is having a brand story. Now stick with me here because I know this one is a little intangible, but it is probably one of the most important things here. If you wanna be an influencer or have a personal brand, then this is absolutely essential. And if you have some kind of product or service that you're advertising, this is also pretty important in getting people to connect with you on a human level. The most successful influencers on Instagram all have an origin story. You can kind of think of it like superheroes. They have an inciting incident that got them started. They have struggles that they went through and then they have their triumph that they share about now, or maybe they continue to share about their struggles. Whatever it is, for people to be able to connect with another human being, you need to know a little bit of that story. And of course, if we're honest, it's not gonna be the full story because everyone's life and history is far too complex to distill into an Instagram bio. But if you have a motivation, a background, a reason, 
going back to the why of growing on Instagram, you need to be able to share that succinctly and in a sort of beginning, middle and end kind of structure so that people can really grasp onto your story and become a part of it. Let's talk about a few examples. Two of my favorite people to follow on Instagram are Jenna Kutcher and The Bird's Papaya. Everybody knows Jenna Kutcher for being the girl who started her business with a $300 Craigslist camera that eventually allowed her to escape from her windowless office nine to five at Target and then to become a digital entrepreneur with a very successful business. See how I'm able to so succinctly describe Jenna's story, even though I'm not her, I've never met her. Honestly, there's probably a ton about her life that I do not know, but because I've been following her on Instagram for a while, I know that that's her background. I know that's her motivation and it gives some context for the content that she's creating. I also mentioned the Bird's Papaya. Her Instagram backstory is that she went through an incredible weight loss journey, losing a hundred pounds, only to realize that she still had body image issues and had to work towards loving herself. And she shares her lessons from that in her Instagram content. These are amazing origin stories if we want to talk about it in a superhero kind of sense because they are so memorable and they make people connect with these influencers and both of these ladies have about a million followers so it is clearly very effective now honestly it can be hard to come up with your own origin story you're almost too close to it you know so much about your own life and your backstory how do you find out what that little soundbite is going to be it definitely takes some time and consideration but once you have your niche and your ideal audience in place Think about why you chose those two as what you want to target and then think about how you can speak to those people with your story and try to come up with something that you can use for your origin story, so to speak, so that people can remember you for that. The second part of this is using your origin story or your background to create super authentic and vulnerable content. If you want to turn followers into dedicated fans, what you're going to need to do is open up, show a vulnerable side, tell stories. You can do this in your captions, in your Instagram stories, in live videos, whatever format feels best to you. Open up, talk about your struggles. People are going to connect with this so much. And because they love the content you're making, they feel like they know you. They're going to be much more likely to recommend your account to their friends. Just like I've talked about Jenna and the Bruce Papaya right now. Imagine if your story could be that powerful that your followers are so excited about the content you're making that they're going to recommend it to their friends. That's how I learned about both Jenna Kutcher and the Birds Papaya is my friend Katie. Yes, we have the same name told me about them. So whatever you think is your weakness right now, turn it into your strength by opening up about those things that you're a little bit insecure about and people are going to love you for it. The fifth big growth strategy for 2020 to get organic new followers on Instagram is engaging with your ideal follower systematically. It's important that you do this in an intentional way. The aim of this game is to go out and find the people who might be interested in following you rather than just using hashtags and waiting around for hopefully somebody to come to your profile, figure out who you want to have following you and go out there and make friends with them. You know, on this channel, I'm all about building relationships and connections and having a true community and true community only comes from actually having those relationships with your followers. I've built so many friendships on Instagram and not only are they rewarding to me, but I think it's also another way for me to be able to provide value and serve people who need my help. So figure out who your ideal follower is. I'm definitely going to make a video on this because I know some of you have been saying that you're not really sure how to determine who that ideal follower is. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it when I come up with that video very soon. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in it. And once you know who that person is, I want you to go to their profile, like their photos, comment and engage. I actually have a whole video about how to do this really systematically with a bunch of step by steps that you can take every day in order to go and engage with those people. So I want you to go check that one out next. I promise you it's going to like revolutionize your Instagram engagement strategy. But before you head on over there, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in this one. Okay. Bye.